Hello friends and welcome to Beginner Tutorials in VR Interaction Framework Episode 2. In this one I'm going to be going over the snap zone. And uh, these are very handy, not for just placing objects like a gun in a holster or whatever, but we're, what we're actually going to do is we're going to uh, trigger events from a snap zone. But first we're going to start the wiki and we're just going to go over some of the stuff that it says. So, snap zones are triggers that can grab objects. Well, yes. They can, so you release something next to a snap zone, it snaps into place. Uh, when the snap zone, uh, when there's something in the snap zone, its uh, colliders are disabled, which you can set that true or false on the actual script itself. It just prevents it from bouncing off stuff while it's snapped in, so if you've got something snapped into an object you're carrying around, then the object won't be bouncing off of things. Um, objects are positioned at 000, local position and rotation by default, so when you put it in there, it'll just set its local position and rotation to where it's in there in that direction. There is a snap zone offset component, which I'll show you how to use, that you can put on the grabbable so that you can reorient it in a different way when you snap it in. So if you were, say, putting a knife in one and you wanted it to be oriented in a certain way when it was in there, you would use this script to do that. Uh, there's a snap zone scale component that you can use, so you can scale the grabbable when it's put into a snap zone. You can also... You would use that if you had several different uh, objects that would go into a snap zone. So you would take the snap zone scale and you would put it on your grabables. And each one of them you could size differently when you put it in there. There's also a uh, setting on the snap zone where you can scale it to a certain scale, like 50% or whatever, uh, for every object that you put in there. So it just depends on how you want to use it. We'll go over that too. Um, return to snap zone component for the grabable. So if you put this on your grabable, Let's say you picked up a gun and it has this on it, you could assign it to always return to a snap zone. So if you dropped your gun, it would return to that assigned snap zone. That way you don't lose your gun. Um, explains that here. If you had a tool belt and knives, this is what you would use so that they automatically go back in. So read over this. Um, now let's go into Unity. And I'm just in the demo scene. So let's scroll down here. Come into the center door. And I'm going to show you how you can use a snap zone to make a key to lock and unlock this door. Which is a common mechanic in a game. Um, but you could also use snap zones for anything. Let's just say that you needed to destroy something uh, when something was placed in there. Or, or really anything you could think of. You're just triggering an event when something is snapped or unsnapped. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this label and get it out of my way. So just disable it so it's out of the way. Come into BNG Framework, go to your prefabs, oh, what's it called, is it snap point, yep, snap point, so let's pull that up here, and then we need to rotate it, so I believe it is 90, yeah, let's just pull it out a little bit so it's in front of it, and pull it over so it's next to the door, and up a little bit, I'm sitting down so I'm not going to make it very high, oh wait, that's a reach too high, okay, so if you look at your snap zone on the, on the snap point, if you hover over each one of these things, it'll tell you what it does. Uh, so when something snapped into it, this is going to be what is in the uh, object. So you can literally reference from a script what the held item is in, in the snap zone. A starting item, if I wanted an item to be in this when I uh, started the game or the level or whatever, I could place an object in the, uh, in the scene in front of it and just assign it here it has to be in the uh, in the hierarchy. It can't be a prefab, and then it'll automatically snap it. Uh, can drop item. Just hover over them. See what they say. Item will move back to the inventory space if player drops it. So your assigned item. This is an option to where if they drop it after they pull it out, will it go back? Um, can you swap the item? If false, the snap zone cannot have its own content replaced. So you can't. Uh, put something else in a snap zone and have it swap swap with it. Can you remove the item? So if it's checked true, then you cannot have its content replaced. Is that what that means? Or has he just got that labeled wrong? I think what that is is literally what it says. Can you remove the item? Okay, scale item. This is the one I was talking about where you can specify a, a scale so if I were to set this to 0.5, I 
it would any item you put in here will be half its size and then when you pull it back out it would be a normal size so for right now we'll just leave that as one so it'll just stay the same size that it is when you snap it disable colliders do you want it to disable the collision when it's snapped I just leave that checked maybe you have a reason to uncheck that I don't know duplicate item on grab if you check this and you go to pull the item out it'll duplicate it so if you need something where it keeps duplicating the item, like, I don't know, a ball feeder or something, you know, where a new ball is, every time you pull one out and throw it, a new one pops in. Um, max drop time. This is just a, a time, amount of time that it'll wait, the max time that it'll wait for you to drop an object for it to go into the snap. So if you drop an object, you wouldn't want this to be really high because if you're walking past it, it might snap into your snap zone. That's what that's for. Only allow names. So this is where we can specify the only object that is allowed to be placed in the snap zone. We're actually going to use that. Then the exact opposite excludes, so I could put a name in here and it would only allow that object to not be placed in the snap zone. Um, sounds. Sound on snap. So if I wanted to play a sound when I put an object in there, I could put the audio clip there and it would play. If I wanted something to play when it unsnaps, I would put the audio clip there and it would play. And then the events is where I can write uh, a method and I can call that method from this event so when I snap something in I can do stuff or if I take it out it'll do stuff and we're actually going to use both of these so whoo that's a lot of talking all right so let's click on our door and if you come down to door you'll see on your door helper script that there is a uh, bull door is locked well we're going to make a key for this door so we want it to be locked so we'll check that and make it lock, and then we're going to control this from our snap point. So let's go ahead and come back to our main screen here, right click. We're going to create a new script, and we're going to call this um, door lock. Sure. Oops. Door lock. Okay. And we'll open it up. Waiting for the script. Okay, so uh, let's just say using ng, and we'll say uh, private uh, door helper door. So we're just going to get that component door helper that's on the door, and we're going to place the script on the door, so it's, it'll just get the component door helper. And then I'll start, we're going to say door equals get component uh, door helper. So that gets that component from that object. Okay, and then we're going to get rid of our update function because we don't need it. And whenever you call a method from um, one of the events on not just the snap zone, but um, any of the uh, you know the gravel scripts or however you want to do it but just make it public so that you can access it from that event so we'll say public void uh, unlock <coughs> okay so then we'll say uh, door which is our door component dot the bool so door is locked equals false Oops. False. There we go. And then let's come down and write another one. We'll say uh, public void lock. We'll say door, which is our component, and then our bool door is locked equals true. Simple enough. Okay. So let's go back into Unity. Let's click on our door. Okay. You don't have to fill out anything because we're actually putting it on the door. So it's going to get the door helper component from the door. So we're going to grab this and we're going to change this from this script. So now let's click back on our snap point. Let's come down to our events. Snap on snap event. So add one. And then we're going to do an on detach event. Add one. And we're going to take our door, which is where we put that script. Put it there. Hopefully it's going to show it to me. Nope. 
if you ever have it do that, just come over to your script and just make a change so it reloads the scripts. Okay. Get back on my snap point. Come down to my event. Go to the door lock. Unlock. We're going to unlock the door. So when we snap something in here, a key, um, it'll unlock the door. And then the same thing. We'll take our door, put it in there, and then come down to door lock, and we'll say lock. Okay, so now we're calling that bool from our events. So now we need a key. So let's go into our BNG framework. Um, this could be any object, but I'm just going to use a I'm going to use a simple yellow block. Pull it in, drop it on the ground, and let's unpack it. Probably not necessary, but we're going to do it anyway. And let's rename it to key block. Let's just copy it because make sure we get our spelling right. And if we come back to our snap zone, and we come down to where it says only allow names, so plus. Now the only object that will be allowed to be placed in here is our key block. So nothing else will go in here. So you have to have the key to unlock this door. So let's click back on here real quick. Come down to our door helper and make sure that our door is locked. And that way it starts as locked when we start the game. So let's hop into VR and see how that works real quick. Alright, so here I am in VR can't open the door. Let's pick up our key block. Let's put the key in the door. And now we can open it. Close the door. Take it out. We can't open it anymore. And additionally, because we set it to where only our key can open the door, nothing else will go in there. So that's how you make a simple key using a snap point. Okay, now, let's say I wanted to resize this object when I put it in. So let's click on the object, um, and let's come down to the bottom, let's add a component, and you want the uh, snap zone uh, scale. Um, you would use this one if you wanted to size it um, per object. So let's say I wanted this one to be half size when I put it in, but if I put another object in there, I would want it to be uh, you know, a quarter of the size, just depending on the object. You can use this script on the Gravable itself to change the scale. Um, you would just put the scale in there. Do I want a half size? Do I want it, uh, you know, quarter size? So when I put the object in there, it'll be quarter size. Um, another way that you can do this, um, if you wanted all objects, no matter what the object is, you wanted it to be half size when you put it in there. If you go to the snap point, there is a scale. Oh, where's that? Um, scale. Or where is that? Oh, that ain't it. There is scale item. So for giggles, since we're only allowing one object to be placed here, we're just going to make that half size. So now when we put the key in there, it'll be half the size that it actually is. And vice versa, we just went over that. Um, so now if we click on our object, let's say I wanted this thing to be oriented differently when I put it in. So let's say uh, I was putting a knife or something into a snap zone or I was putting a key in and it needed to be oriented in exactly a correct way and not just at zero, zero, zero. So I could add a component to the object and put uh, offset. Or if I wanted it to, you know, be positioned over here instead of on the snap point. Or I can just, well, for this, we're just going to change the rotation. So let's just go ahead and make that a 45. Now let's jump into VR and see what that did. All right, so here we are in VR and let's just see what those changes did. As you can see, the object is on a 45, and it's half size. If I can grab it without smacking my microphone all over the place. All right, so there you go. Um, and additionally, if I put it in there, I can open the door. And if I take it out, I can't open the door.
Okay, so there's a very simple mechanic that you can do with a snap zone for creating a key for a door. Um, so let's say you fight through your level to get to the key, or in an example in Half-Life Alex, where she had to find a key card to get it through the door. Um, here it is. It's a very simple way to do it. Um, obviously, you could do a, a trigger for this, but this is just a really simple way to unlock a door. Um, you could use this for puzzles. It wouldn't even have to necessarily be one block. Um, you could make it to where you had to put three blocks where you could check the other two to make sure that this object is there um, in order to trigger the vent or because you can specify which one has to go in there or you, you know or not well let me let me step back a little bit let's say that I had three blocks this is a little bit more complicated so just just think about this so um, my held item so I can actually reference in a script to see which item is being held in this. So if I had three of these, I could have a script that checks to make sure that the three are in the correct slots. So if you had three snap zones, they would have to be in the correct order and in the correct slots. Um, you could use that for a way to think about puzzling games. Just try to think outside of the box. The main thing is, is that you can trigger events and you can reference what the held item is. This is how you use this to where you can make more complicated things. So start simple. And then just try to build off of it and start working off of it to see what kind of stuff you can come up with. Um, the framework makes it to where I didn't have to create the snap zone. I didn't have to create all this stuff. It's just tools that I can use to build uh, the mechanics that I'm trying to do. Um, so I hope you found this informative. And thanks for joining.